With a GDP of $4.2 trillion, Japan's economy is the third largest in the world, behind only the United States and China. Following that rank, Japan should be the third most powerful nation in the world, but Japan limited itself until now. Apparently, China has pushed the country to the wall, and Japan has no choice but to be a beast again. It's fortifying its military at a staggering pace in preparation for an increasingly likely war with China, fitting to take place in no other theater than the heavily controversial, heavily debated South China Sea. The South China Sea, a calm, beautiful 1.3 million square mile body of natural goodness. A third of all shipping in the world happens in this region, making it one of the most trafficked waters in the world. It is famous for its commerce, abundant fishing grounds, massive reservoirs of oil, and, well, its likelihood to be the venue for World War III. You see, the sea is off the coast of China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Each of these countries claims a section of the sea closest to their shores for themselves, stretching out a few missiles. But for China, a section isn't enough. It wants 90% of the entire sea, to which other nations of the world and international laws have screamed a massive, not gonna happen. China, undeterred, has ignored these reservations and gone ahead to push its weaker neighbors out of the water in a much more aggressive way than any other country in decades. To enforce international law and bluff for allies in the region, American, Australian, Canadian forces, among others, regularly sail and fly through the region. These sorties, known as Freedom of Navigation Operations, are meant to assert the right of any vessel, including foreign military vessels, to sail in an area illegally claimed by another country. China's response to these ships and aircraft have run from relatively gentle shadowing of foreign warships to the more violent firing of lasers. China's navy already outnumbers the U.S. Navy in number of ships, but the country isn't stopping there. It's growing its naval capabilities rapidly to grow its influence beyond its shores, almost like in preparation for an all-out conflict. Destroyers, cruisers, submarines, and aircraft carriers are the most powerful vessels that navies can have, and China is building them all. The 7,500-ton Type 52D Luyang three-class guided missile destroyers, each armed with a 130mm gun, surface-to-air missiles, close-in weapon systems, and 64 vertical launching systems are already making waves. So also are the larger 13,000-ton Type 55 Ren High-class guided missile cruisers, with 112 vertical launching systems, torpedo tubes, and so on, that make them ideal for anti-air, anti-surface, and anti-submarine missions. China currently operates 56 nuclear and conventionally powered submarines, and is making efforts to get that number into the 60s. The number is indeed growing, with new guided missile nuclear-powered attack submarines of the Shang class. However, China is currently focused more on its aircraft carriers than submarines. The U.S. aside, China has the most aircraft carriers on the planet. The latest, the Type 003 Fujian, is the largest conventionally powered aircraft carrier in the world. It's also the only non-Western aircraft carrier to feature catapult launch and arrested landing systems, which would allow it to host a wider range of aircraft than its predecessors ever could. Yet China continues to build even larger, more powerful aircraft carriers, along with other vessels. China isn't the only one, though. Japan, too, is spending big. Japan, too, is heavily fortifying its navy. Japan, too, is getting ready for war. 52.9 billion dollars. That's Japan's budget request for the fiscal year 2024, the highest the country has ever gone. And in the next five years, Japan intends to spend about $307 billion on its military. This is over 250% more than what the country spent in the last five years. These numbers reflect the urgency of keeping pace with China. Japan's navy, 
the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, or JMSDF for short, is already one of the largest in the world. But it is well on its way to grow even larger and more powerful, with three developments in particular being the largest power-boosting additions. Latest Maya-class destroyers The bulk of the JMSDF fleet escort force is provided by its destroyers, the latest to enter service being the two 170-meter-long 8,200-ton Maya-class destroyers, JS Maya and JS Haguro, commissioned in 2020 and 2021 respectively. Equipped with a combination of the latest baseline J7 Aegis system, SPY 1DV radar, and ANSBQ 9B X band fire control radar, they fire the standard Missile 3 Block 2A missile and are expected to be fitted with Standard Missile 6 soon. To spot their targets, they feature both a hull mounted sonar system and a towed array system, which makes them particularly dangerous to threats in anti submarine warfare. To make the most of all these, they feature a combined gas turbine electric and gas turbine propulsion system arrangement, the first ships of the Japanese Navy to do so. New Taigei class submarines. The JMSDF is also making efforts to boost its firepower. And what other way to do that than new submarines that wield cruise missiles launchable from vertical launching systems? A year ago, the first boat of the new 3,000-ton, $635 million Taigei-class submarine, JS Taigei, was commissioned. This submarine and its siblings of the future will have an improved combat management system and sonar. And they are also much quieter and more maneuverable in the water than their predecessors, the Soryu-class submarines. However, they do learn from the Soryu class, picking up lithium-ion battery-based propulsion systems which the Soryu class was the first on the planet to wield. The JMSDF's fleet of diesel submarines is its most important capability for denying an enemy sea control, and so they plan to keep the subs as lethal and as sharp as a samurai sword. Newly Converted Izumo-class Aircraft Carriers JS Izumo is the lead ship of the Izumo-class floating airbases of the JMSDF, and JS Kaga is its twin. Both were originally built as helicopter-carrying destroyers, but are now being upgraded to aircraft carrier status to enable them to counter the seemingly looming threats from its next-door neighbors. However, as neither of the 27,000-ton ships has a ski jump or catapult to launch aircraft, and the features can't be added economically, the ships would be limited to short takeoff vertical landing aircraft, or Stovall aircraft for short. One such aircraft is the American F 35B Lightning II, which is widely regarded as the most advanced, most intelligent stealth jet ever to grace the skies. This Stovall approach seemed manageable enough for Japan's Ministry of Defense, and so despite already having the conventional version of the F 35, the F 35A, Japan announced in December 2018 that it would purchase about 40 F-35Bs to be shared between Izumo and Kaga after conversion. Three years later, two United States Marine Corps F-35B fighters performed the first vertical landings and horizontal takeoffs from Izumo, marking the first time in over seven decades that a fixed-wing aircraft would be operated from a Japanese carrier. The carriers would also host multiple anti-submarine helicopters, search and rescue helicopters, and a variety of other aircraft. For built-in defenses, each carrier has an air defense suite consisting of two Phalanx and two C-RAM close-in weapon systems. These systems, and a literal boatload of others, are powered by a propulsion system of a COGAG with two shafts and four GE IHI LM2500 IEC gas turbines that produce up to 112,100 horsepower. This propulsion system can thrust an aircraft carrier to a top speed of 30 knots and provide enough power across the entire ship to serve a complement of 520 people. All of these features and capabilities give the Izumo and Kaga unit costs exceeding $1 billion each. However, despite all of the preparations going on in Japan, its face-off with China might, interestingly, come in ways that have nothing to do with Japan. Here are two of those ways. While Japan and China are constantly at loggerheads, war between the two nations may begin even without their knowledge, from hundreds of miles away, in a variety of scenarios. 
The first scenario could be purely accidental, as Chinese Marines attempt to intimidate Philippine Marine Corps troops stationed on the beachhead landing ship BRP Sierra Madre by staging a live fire exercise nearby, but the exercise is mistaken for an assault. The Philippines retaliates, China responds, and then the US and Japan, being allies, get involved and attack China. The second scenario could be China's invasion of Taiwan. China sees Taiwan as a breakaway province that it must reabsorb into its territory, whether by diplomacy or by explosive means. Taiwan disagrees with this, and so do its allies, Japan and the US, who would no doubt get involved should a war break out between China and Taiwan. Either scenario, a war breaks out between China and Japan without a direct confrontation between the two nations. And of course, the war could go off with a direct confrontation between them. Who knows? Japan, likely to go to war with the second most powerful nation on the planet, has its foot to the pedal and the hammer to the metal to come out on top victorious. Best case scenario, this war never happens. And to ensure best case scenario becomes a reality, subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. Thanks for watching.